Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Celebrating Act 2 again has the pleasure of speaking with the virtual gourmet, John Mariani. Hi, John. Hello. John, uh, we, uh, we are amidst the holidays. And uh, for some reason, I always think of holidays, uh, dinners and things like that, adding a nice little dessert wine. Mm. Let's talk about dessert wines. Tell me, what are they? It's a, cat it's a whole category. Yeah, it is. Um, you could call them sweet wines since you can drink them at other times of the day and night. I mean, they, uh, dessert wines uh, or sweet wines, uh, by the way, are very, very good with cheeses, um, especially the classic match of all time, famously, is Chateau um, de Cam Sauterne, which is to be drunk with um, Roquefort cheese. Um, but it is, I mean, this, the sweetness of a dessert wine is very, very nice if you have a, a rich, creamy cheese, or even a, even a lightweight cheese, it goes well. I would, I would say a nice dry white wine for something like mozzarella or even red wine, but um, they go very, very well um, with that. But it is coming up on the holidays, and I think people splurge a little bit more, um, because dessert wines have gone out of fashion uh, for all sorts of reasons, because of the caloric intake uh, after a meal, which we had a, a cocktail and then a bottle of wine. Uh, <clears throat> do we really need more of this in our system? And I think because people have changes, ch changed in their uh, patterns that they don't, as a matter of course, go sit before the fire with their mastiff next to them and uh, watch the, the embers go as you're knocking back a, uh, a dessert wine. Which, technically speaking, you could even say uh, a thing with dry cognacs and brandies uh, and, and rums and so far, dessert wine. But those are really more after-dinner drinks or night um, But uh, dessert wines, I mean, they're very, very varied. Uh, and one of the problems is that socially they became unacceptable because they were associated with the vilest of sweet, sugary, American wines, and Boone's Farm, Apple wine, and uh, Thunderbird, and, and, and things of that sort, and um, uh, American port, uh, which were simply awful, awful dregs of, dregs of, of wines. And uh, to be off of those kinds of wines was like your, your great aunt saying, would you like a little sherry, my dear? You know. Uh, or, or a, a lecherous guy saying, have some Madeira, my dear. Um, but this is to ignore <clears throat> some of the greatest wines in the world. Now, I mentioned Chateau de Chem, which is considered the greatest of all the Sauterne, uh, which come out of, comes out of France. And uh, but there are many, many other Sauternes, which are dirt cheap. Chateau de Chem, of course, your fortune. But below that, I mean, you can get really good Sauternes and Barsacs for... Forty, fifty dollars, and nobody's drinking the whole bottle or in a half a bottle. You have this much, you know, mm, really, really nice. So you're getting six, seven glasses out of something that's costing forty, fifty dollars of one of the world's great um, dessert wines. Um, so Sauternes and Barsac are like many uh, dessert wines made uh, with grapes that have been t attacked by a fungus called uh, a phylloxera. Uh, and this uh, gets on it and it, it really rots the grapes. So if you make them when they're sp well, supposed to be made uh, as, as wine grapes, they're not going to be any good. And so when it attacks it, it drives out moisture, so intensifies the sugar that's already in the grapes, because grapes are basically the sugar and water in there. So it intensifies it and become, it becomes like really almost a raisin status. So when these wines are made, you don't get as much as you would if you got all that juice, but you get extremely intensified. Now, what makes that different from the crummy, cheaper wines is that they have to have some backbone to them. They have to have the right acid to them. So it's not just like, whoa, that's a lot of sugar, but oh, that is delicious, like, like a really great piece of chocolate or something. And that's the way uh, these Sauternes are made. And that's the way German's greatest wines, uh, which are called Biernauschleser and Trockenbiernauschleser, 
<coughs> excuse me, have to drink after that. Bernauschleser and Trockenbernauschleser and even Spätleser and Auschleser uh, have traditionally been sweet wines, which are drunk as you would drink to a turn uh, afterwards. And those are made by that dried raisin status. There are some in Italy which are made that way too, including uh, Amarone, which are dried in mass. They're not attacked by the fungus, but they are dried to raisin status. So that's kind of what they taste like. Um, California Rieslings also, uh, which are made dry, uh, they can also be attacked by this uh, deliberately. Um, and they can induce it. It doesn't happen every year. And then there are ice wines, which in Europe is E-I-S here, I-C-E, but it's the same thing. And ice wines literally are left to freeze. And when they are thawed out, so they're even more intense in their character uh, than the uh, ones that attacked with the uh, fungus and so forth. So that's, um, and you know who makes some of the best ice wines in the world? New York State, up at the really? thing. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I was going. I was going to ask you. You know, unlike um, uh, uh, and and you you've given us uh, uh, so much information about uh, uh, parts of the world that are known for uh, certain uh, liqueurs or wines or uh, spirits of, of various kinds, and and that champagne owns their their language from uh, what they call their grapes, but that they are very fine things made around the world. So it appears as if that. Um, uh, these dessert wines are not so regional, and that they're probably made all over the world, like New, like you say, New York and California. Is that uh, generally true? You can uh, have them made relatively locally, any place. Um, yeah, wherever wine is made, you're going to find people taking an attempt at it. But other places, quite traditional, including in Champagne, where up until the turn of the 20th century, uh, sweet champagnes. Uh, which will do D O U X sweet mm -hmm. and demi sec half dry were by far the most preferred um, wines, uh, champagnes uh, of that period for a long time. And then the fashion became for drier and drier, brut and extra brut and so forth. Um, if you go back to the times of the American Revolution or the colonies in the 19th century, um, because it wines, one of the reasons that wines like Madeira, Marsala, uh, port, and sherry are fortified. That is, that there's some alcohol uh, added to it. The alcohol not only stops stops fermentation at a certain point, but it stabilizes it. So they found, for instance, with Marsala, uh, they took this red wine from Marsala, the south of Italy, and they were shipping it, and it was coming into the British ports, tasting rank, and you couldn't ship it across the Atlantic. It was just terrible. But if it was added brandy to it, and then it was stabilized and with all this rocking of the boat and so forth, and you could keep it a lot longer. So the George Washington Thomas Jefferson were in long likelihood drinking uh, Madeira, Marsala, and port, um, which was exported. And when um, Jefferson attempted to grow vinifera grapes from Europe, it didn't go well at all. It just Virginia's. He didn't know how to do it, and the Virginia soil was not right for it. So they drank a lot of um, uh, dry wines in that day, and they loved the, loved the German wines. Um, there are another couple I wanted to uh, speak about. So I told you about Marsala and Madeira. Um, Porto is, of course, made in Portugal. And that's another you know, misnomer. You can buy American port, but that's usually of the quality of the bad stuff. Same with American sherry, which is better for cooking with than for drinking. And sherry is generally very dry. Um, but you can got if you get to the Oloroso and Palo Cortado um, uh, sherries, those are sweeter and very, very luscious. One called Lustau, L-U-S-T-A-U, is just extraordinary. You just take a sip like this and very, very satisfying. Uh, Madeira, the same way. Madeira is made dry. Madeira, we think of uh, like Marsala, that Oh, veal marsala. But you put dry veal marsala, uh, dry marsala generally in veal, and it's like vermouth. Um, although it's very good with the sweet stuff too. But the sweet stuff is uh, uh, absolutely delicious. And then the Italians have what are called amaros, which means bitter, but they are anything but. And amaros are, like, are pretty much like cordials. 
Okay. Uh, they're not grappa, which is very dry, um, but limoncello has become very well known. And these the, the limoncello, you put sugar into it because all, all it is, it's a lemon and uh, neutral spirits and sugar. So you can make it as sweet or non-sweet as you wish. And that's great in the afternoon if you're strolling through Capri and you just had a nice meal in the Trattoria and you have an espresso and then you have a shot of limoncello it makes the whole world even, even brighter. Um, and there are a lot of Amaros, which leads to cordials. Um, you know, when I was a kid, my mom used to allow me now and again to have a little creme de cacao, um, creme de cocoa. Yeah. And yeah. That moved up to creme de month, uh, vanilla ice cream, um, which I thought was just the greatest thing in the world. And of course, creme de cacao is uh, what makes a lady's kiss. Um, you put a little whipped cream on top of the of the um, creme de cacao and uh, use that against them. <laughs> but uh, there are some very, very good cordials. The, the, the company best known for the best cordials is in Amsterdam, De Kuiper, D-E-K-U-Y-P-E-R. And they are distilled and made with finesse and uh, great, great, great tradition. So uh, whether it's made with cherry, like cherry hearing or, or, uh, or any number of, uh, of uh, flavors, um, they are to be respected, even if they're not drunk that much. But with yeah. the holidays, you're absolutely right. Um, treat yourself a little of this. You've given us a lot of good choices. Too many? Never no, Never too many. Never too many. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you, and Merry Christmas when you get to it. Merry Christmas. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.